Heart disease is the leading cause of death for women in the United States. And at an event for the American Heart Association, I heard a gentleman named Tom Litzinger share his story. I knew that I wanted to share it with all of you. In September 1991, his wife Debbie died. Her heart stopped and they couldn't revive her. Tom found himself a single father at the time. His daughter Amy was six and his 27-year-old wife was dead. One day... Really, when Amy was probably seven, shortly after mom passed away, she just came up to me and said, Dad, I want to be a doctor. I want to help people like my mommy who are sick. On a recent afternoon, we sat down with Tom Litzinger in his Brighton, Michigan home, where he shared with us pictures of young Amy. This is one of my favorites here. Tom eventually remarried, having a son with his wife, Katie. And Amy? She might have only been seven when she declared her desire to be a doctor, but she never lost sight of it, landing in med school at the University of Toledo. She was just thrilled that she could finally see that last step of becoming a doctor becoming a reality. In the fall of 2011, 20 years after her mom passed away, Amy Litzinger was in her third year of med school, highly successful, burning the candle at both ends as med students often do, and feeling fatigued. One day during a hospital rotation, she almost collapsed. When I got that call, um, I mean, it was just unreal. Amy had to be rushed to surgery and the diagnosis, all too familiar to Tom, cardiomyopathy, the exact same thing that had killed his wife Debbie 20 years earlier. Amy received a defibrillator and pacemaker, but insisted on returning to school. Dr. Ronald McGinnis taught Amy at University of Toledo College of Medicine. Amy pushed herself where other people would have never known actually how much, uh, how many symptoms she was having. Eventually, her treatment led her to the Mayo Clinic. In December of 2012, we took her out there for an open heart procedure that she didn't survive. Amy passed away New Year's Day, January 2013. She would always say to me, you know, I think I'm going to live longer than my mom. But ultimately she missed it by a few days. So, um... They were both 27. Both 27. But that is not where her story ends. She had actually completed all the requirements to um, receive her MD and ultimately did. Right before her trip to Mayo, Amy took her boards, which her family found out after she died, she had passed. In June of 2013, I accepted her diploma for her. What was that day like? Uh, The saddest, most happiest day to to understand that she accomplished her goal, but that she didn't know that she accomplished her goal, and then to know that she would miss out on really a lifetime of serving others which she wanted to do was difficult amy was widely recognized for her patient care and advocacy amy had a glow about her uh, she was uh, loved she was loved by her classmates by her patients by everybody that came in contact with her so her dad started a foundation in her name that now awards a scholarship each year to a student in need who shares Amy's values. And how can I not do this? How can I not help a student that could potentially make the difference in the medical community that I believe that Amy could have had? Almost three years after she died, it's not hard to find Amy in Tom's home. The pictures, the diplomas, and the prayer right there on the living room wall. A prayer discovered by Amy's family after she was gone. A prayer written by Amy, likely in the weeks, if not days, before her final surgery. Thank you for helping me succeed. There's so much to be thankful for and to praise you for. Thank you for being my God, Amy.
Now, there's also a lecture series named in Amy's honor at UT, such a testament to the impact that she had in the four and a half years there. And like I mentioned, there's also that scholarship. And we decided to share this story with you now because it is the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women luncheon next week, raising awareness about women's heart health. If you want to learn more about the luncheon or the Amy Litzinger Scholarship Fund, it's all on WTOL.com. And I really wanted to share that prayer as well. That was just yep. a small piece of it, but it really reflected what was in the whole prayer, which was, um, I think, so much gratitude. Mm -hmm. And to be in such a situation like that and still show so much gratitude, I think, speaks volumes about yeah. the kind of woman she was. Sounds like an amazing young lady. This mm -hmm. cardiomyopathy, where are we on this? It, it, there's different causes. There, there, yeah. It can be genetic, and for her, it was a it genetic was. Um, issue. But uh, again, heart disease overall, the leading cause yeah. of death in women. So it's something we need to be yeah. aware of. You need to be aware of the risk factors in your own family. We have a lot more information for you on WTOL.com. Okay.